with the historically horrific launch of the day before and well unlaunch of it the indie gaming scene has certainly been rocked to its core and put on a rather unstable untrusted pedestal especially with the ever increasing list of new games extremely reminiscent of other franchises to the point of near copyright infringement like power world forcing a litany of indie developers to have to come out with public pr statements about how they're not in fact scams now is power world comparable to the day before, a game where the entire marketing scheme, concept, and even bloody trailers were stolen ideas. Kind of. I'd say Power World is up there for the list of video games that are just begging for a lawsuit. But this time around, it is not a scam. I know, how exciting. Power World is a real game and I was lucky enough to get early access from the developers where I spent most of my time pondering how on earth they won't be sued for blatantly copying Zelda, Pokemons and god knows what else I'm too stupid to notice. I mean seriously. Some of the ripoff Pokemon aka Powers are insanely similar to actual Pokemon and I mean incredibly close to one another. Not to mention all of the clearly stolen art design slash styles from Zelda alongside a lot of the text and NPC interactions feeling a little too close to get away with. But, in terms of the actual game however, it's not anything amazing overall, despite having some fantastic aspects, just like real Pokemon games. In my not so humble opinion, I'd put Power World about on par if not just slightly above most modern Game Freak launches. For 30 bucks, I'd hesitantly say this is worth the money for Pokemon fans looking for something with future potential that also don't mind the countless quirks of early access, which is fantastic fantastic for an actual indie studio and not a first party Nintendo developer who likes to act like they're one. Know your fucking place, trash. Especially when you take into account that this has launched into an early access period, not a full price $60 AAA game, with basic functionality like audio control hidden behind missable game items. Oh, it's so dumb, it's brilliant. No! It's just dumb! So what sets Power World apart from being just another uninspired sloppy mess? Well, as an adult, I'm sure you've pondered the severe morally apprehensive ethics of the Pokemon world. Thinking to yourself, do they have factories of these poor little creatures tirelessly working day in, day out, as slaves for humans to make those beautiful Pokedex that totally weren't ripped off in this game as well? Wonder no more, because Power World is here to give you your every blasphemous desire towards a Pokemon. No, not that one. There are laws against the Pals. Why was that your first thought? Why? Of course, the first thing I did as soon as I realized you could create arc level characters was recreate the embodiment of peak male stature, aka Asmongold. Until I realized I really didn't want to be looking at Mr. N64 controller all day and night, so I made a muscle mummy. Lord have mercy, I'm about to bust. Because for some reason, everyone in this Pokemon ripoff is comically buff by default. Don't ask me why, they just are. If there's one major issue with Power World, it's simply that there are a lot of unnecessary features and systems which have no need to exist, such as the Wanted system. Not only is it genuinely terrible with absolutely useless AI, but it also has no place existing in this game if I'm being brutally honest. Pocket Pass should think about scaling back the game and focusing on what really makes it shine. Everything to do with the Pals, base build Building and farming is sublime. The way they actually have specific tasks they can do inside of bases that other pal types can't do is great. The fact you don't even have to maintain your own home or feed your pals by yourself and can just flat out leave it to your slaves, I mean poker, I mean uh, pals, is also phenomenal. They will do all of your farming tasks for you and it is essentially what Ark should have done with its dinosaurs. I love it. More of this please. Everything outside of that however is either mediocre or doesn't feel like it needs to exist. When crafting items or building parts of your base, pals are able to help you speed up the process as well as do it themselves. The problem is, you as the player here have to stand there and hold down manually for the entire duration of build time for the item you're crafting. For some tasks, it takes forever. And there is no reason why this shouldn't be something you just click and wait until it finishes to collect. If you're going to force me to manually sit there to craft stuff, at least add in some kind of mini game behind it. As far as I can tell, the fairly decent upgrade path that is admitted 
admittedly also way too slow to progress through doesn't seem to solve this problem. I hate this. Less of this please. The open world for starters feels brimming with life but certainly has issues. The main area surrounding the totally not ripped off Zelda-esque opening is frankly quite beautiful for a Pokemon ripoff and there are plenty of vistas to gawk at. Then you look to the left of those vistas and you notice that someone's clearly just used a paintbrush in the Unreal Editor to create a tree line. If I'm being generously optimistic, this is simply due to the nature of an early access title, since it does get worse and worse the more you venture out. Areas go from being lush and full of detail in the opening area to something I expect took a college student 10 minutes to slap together in Unreal Editor. If there's anything they need to fix, it's how I can't seem to fucking build roofs, but also how the world doesn't get progressively more exciting the more you explore. Sure, there are points of interest such as dungeons, caves with black market dealers who buy pals, entire towns, and even raids, but all of it feels very disjointed. In the towns, NPCs look extremely out of place at times, and when it comes to the raids, they're far too simple. Take some notes from the likes of Monster Hunter World to add in some dedicated mechanics to raids. I am of course not suggesting they implement annoying, overly convoluted puzzles, but I am suggesting they implement more simple things like parts of the bosses falling off if you do enough damage to specific areas, or having wave-based systems you have to survive against during the fights. Having that extra bit of depth goes a long way, and would almost certainly help to elevate these above the current level they're at. If you're going to have major features like raids, then you need to be making them flashy with extra special looking locations they take place in, not just random flat patches of grass, like you showed in the trailers. Power is by all accounts as wide as an ocean and as deep as a puddle. That's not to say there aren't cool aspects in the game, because there certainly are, and they certainly do seem to care, despite it overall feeling like a lot of the effort went into the base building. There are some awesome dynamic interactions that appear to happen with wild pals. No matter their size or levels, they will sometimes burst out into fights with one another, and you'll even see packs of wolves hunting lambos. Yes, all the names for the pals do suck. Some even more so than what you just heard, by the way. Lambos is probably the most creative one I've seen. What Pocket Pair needs to take away from the inevitable feedback they're going to get when this game drops is that it's always the little things that go a long way. I think ultimately they should be scaling back their vision for the time being and focus on making sure the core aspects are great since right now, they're really not. Proven best by the fact I haven't seen a single power with a swimming animation despite power world being set on an island. What is this? New world? As it currently stands, I'll give them credit where it's due. They're about on par with Pokemon. Unless we're talking about the morbid humor present everywhere including the Steam page. I love that stuff. While power world is clearly a lawsuit waiting to happen, I am surprised to say it has exceeded my oh-so-low expectations for a Pokemon ripoff by a long shot. There are lots of issues as expected with an early access title, but ultimately the core aspects of the game have a solid enough foundation to turn this into something great so long as they pull back the scale ever so slightly. I mean, who doesn't love discovering a random NPC who spawns pizza for you?